discussing uh, about different aspects that will enable us to see the supernatural manifest in the natural world. Um, and uh, we looked at a couple of keys so far. One was uh, to know that we are part of two worlds. Okay? So understanding the bearing of the spiritual realm uh, on the natural realm. And you know how we can actually see changes in the natural realm when we apply the principles of the spiritual realm. Okay, um, so I'm just reminded. I'll, I'll, you know, go back to our main subject, but I just want to share some examples. Also, we're not in a rush to complete. You know, oh, one key, second key, third key. But the whole point is that we get a grasp or a hold of. Uh, these truths and that each one of us is able to walk uh, in what has been offered to us by God through his word and the work of his Holy Spirit. So he said first key, understanding the realm of the spirit. Then uh, you know the second key which we touched upon was faith. Okay, we saw how that is important. So uh, maybe I will uh, you know share some uh, practical uh, examples from my experience and a little bit on the first key and then again we'll touch on the second key some more and then move on to the third key which is uh, the power of the word of God. So about the spiritual realm having a bearing on the natural realm. Um, so uh, recently, recently uh, I had this one um, person who told me that uh, there was a lot of uh, strife going on okay, in their family. Uh, so it was challenging, you know, it's, it's so difficult, right? Like uh, somebody to go back to a home where there, will, there is a lot of quarreling and uh, confusion, and accusation, blaming. So all these things were going on. Okay, and I was aware of it, uh, and I, I just, you know, began to pray about it, and also had asked others to pray regarding this matter. And one of them who knew this issue, they were also praying, and uh, they uh, shared with me when they were praying. They got a scripture. That scripture was uh, from Isaiah 60 and verse 18. Um, so I'll just read. Uh, maybe the NIV version, it says, no longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. So can you imagine such an appropriate scripture came to this person and they were praying about this matter. Um, and you know they began to declare uh, this particular scripture, began to pray through this particular scripture time and again, time and again. And what I heard uh, is that somehow the situation in that home is somewhat better. Now, we do understand that uh, uh, you know there is a responsibility which the family members have to uh, take up also to uh, work out their differences and, you know, um, in a very, very practical way, learn to work together. So that aspect is there. However, from the spiritual side, what has happened through prayer, through um, you know the declaration of this, you may want to call it the Rema word you know, that uh, uh, one person got in this matter, is the whole you know, the fighting, the confusion, uh, the just the spirit of strife uh, is, is withheld. While people are able to think uh, more calmly and able to discuss matters. So you see how in everyday life, in ministry, in, um, you know, in, in, in our work, we have to see the realm of the supernatural override the realm of the natural. And you know, we have uh, a lot of understanding you know, about the things and the principles of, of the um, kingdom of God. 
and we have to apply it okay i'm encountering this situation what do i do now you know, god how do i um, see you know if you can imagine like a dark room and you put a light on and the light beams come through that one bulb so god's kingdom is like that the spiritual realm the kingdom of our god is like that in each scenario we can ask god god how can your light shine in this matter i just shared an example that i recently uh, you know went uh, encountered about strife and all that uh, but you know maybe somebody is sick okay uh, and we are praying for them we can say god how can your light shine so that is what these whole keys are about which key can i use so we are learning so that we can apply and we can see uh, you know god working in situation so that was the first key to understand that there is a supernatural spiritual realm and i can have the bearing on the natural realm okay the second key which we touched upon was faith okay so we'll talk little more about faith today and i'll see you know if we can uh, move to the next uh, key of the word of god or we in just spend time here so we said that jesus taught about faith um, and uh, he he was the one who said if you believe you will see the glory of god so for me to see the supernatural take place i need faith in my heart without faith miracles don't happen without faith you know uh uh the the works of god in you know according to his proportion those things don't happen we end up being limited to our own finite thinking and what is possible in our minds okay so um, i was uh, just now we had uh, the first year class where we were talking about the prayer of asking and receiving so asking and receiving in between is what believing that's what jesus taught us to do isn't it uh, matthew 21 22 in mark 11 24 uh, what i want to ever things you desire whatever things you know you want you you ask believing and you will receive it you know you will have them so that's the manner in which we've been taught for us to have answers to prayer uh, we must ask but how do we ask faith that's what jesus was telling the sisters martha and mary if you believe you will see the glory of god so coming to a place of faith is very important without faith you know we we will not be able to see the manifestation uh, of god's power in our midst you know, we saw how uh, even somebody who was outside of the covenant that canaanite uh, woman in matthew 15 28 she received a miracle she received a miracle because it's as if faith has a pull on god's heart persistence you know so sometimes we think persistence minus the faith just keep asking keep asking and you know god will do it it doesn't work like that faith pleases god scripture tells us so faith has a tug on god's heart uh, and therefore we must carry faith in our hearts and it is through faith that you know we will see um, god's intervention uh, whether it is in our own lives or in the lives of people around us so to have faith uh, regarding um, you, you could say regarding even now what i what i just shared you know um, let's say a uh, a matter of confusion in the family or the home okay uh, you when you have faith and you pray when you have faith and you know you release that by declaring the word you have faith uh, and uh, you know you take action that yes everything is going to be okay uh, god will help us what have, begins to take place you know, there is a change that you can see because your moving forward from a place of faith and where there is faith you know god's intervention 
can be seen. So uh, I just want to uh, share, let's say, one more example that all these are like pretty recently, uh, you know, that I have heard and experienced and I'm excited about. So uh, this also happened, I think, maybe two weeks ago that uh, I had visited you know somebody's home uh, from you know some of the people who attend church and uh, we, we had a usual you know some particular prayer for which they are calling so i went there and the prayer was over and there was you know, some time of uh, interaction and during that day the uh, lady of the home she told me pastor you remember uh, you had come uh, for um, some prayer to my home. This was at least, I think, three or four years ago. Uh, okay. So that prayer, do you remember, uh, you had uh, prayed for my neighbors. Okay. So I didn't remember also. So like so long ago. So I said, okay, tell me what happened. Uh, so she said, uh, I wanted to tell you, but uh, you know, I just couldn't get the opportunity. So the lady, one of the people, neighbors that I prayed for, her marriage was falling apart. And uh, she was in a lot of pain. She was very broken. Um, she just come to like a snack, tea, a gathering. Um, and uh, they had told, okay, pastor is coming. So if anybody wants prayer, she pray for you. So it's just that. I can recall that day when I went, I went with a lot of faith. I was like, God, your spirit needs to minister to these people, and especially those who don't know you. So I am going to boldly pray for them. Whatever they uh, come to us, I'm going to pray. And I also recently, I know we also have this whole uh, uh, teaching about gifts of the spirit, and also I was very eager for the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit. And uh, you know, I was praying that God may give me words of knowledge. So I, I only remember that, that I had gone with a lot of uh, faith and I was ministering with the gifts of the spirit. This uh, lady, and that is it. I never met her. Uh, nothing. I just prayed for God to restore her marriage, for God to minister to her, you know, in uh, that place where she's. And, you know, my uh, church person, she told me from that day, things in her home began to change. And apparently now it's been whatever, two, three to four years, they they not accepted Christ or anything, but her marriage got restored. She is living with her husband, her child, and they are attending a church close by because you know they are so happy with Jesus. They are so interested in Jesus. You know, something within them has awakened faith for God in their lives. And I was amazed to hear this. Okay, not that. You know, how did this happen? No, we know God works, right? But I was just thinking that I could recall the way in which I went there and I just had that faith that day that God, you are going to minister to the people who come here. And, you know, it was a simple prayer. I don't even know what words I prayed that day. But, you know, to see that God has answered and it it's a very serious situation, isn't it? That uh, a, a family has come together and they want to seek God. So recently when I heard these updates, I told uh, you know this uh, lady of the house that, okay, we need to build them up in God's word. This is how we can do it. But you know, don't push them. But you see, if, if we uh, they're willing to um, uh, come meet with us. So faith does the impossible and that's my lesson that's my takeaway i've been so blessed to know that god he can move when we go with faith and remember in the last class um, one of you was asking uh, about how we minister 
and uh, we had discussed so much about uh, you know the faith of the person who's receiving but i said that we need to first of all have faith when we are ministering okay so we have to minister by faith so can somebody read galatians 3:3 3, 3? i'm just you know going over her last uh, week's class with some more examples just to make it you know concrete you can find these references in the notes that i have posted on google classroom galatians 3:3 3, 3. galatians chapter 3 verse are you so foolish after beginning with the spirit? Or are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jeffina. Uh, I think you've, uh, which translation is that? I... NIV. NIV, okay. okay. So we'll just uh, look at the NKJV version also. NKJV? Yes, please. Yes. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? All right. So, you see, <laughs> beginning in the spirit. Okay. So, how is that possible? So, basically, uh, what uh, Paul was trying to minister to the Galatians here is he was saying that, see, now you have... Uh, come to believe in God and it's a matter of faith and they were trying to still be in the flesh okay, and do things outside of faith just by by uh, you know things like circumcision and all so he rebukes them and he says where is your faith you first began with faith in god and now you're going back to rituals and activities and performances uh you know as far as your walk with the lord is concerned but you need to continue with faith okay so even here we see how paul ministered to the people and he laid the emphasis not on the works but on faith so he wanted the people to carry on in faith so minister he ministered through the works of the spirit and he did not want them to have any dependence on the works of the flesh okay so in the same manner for us today people must be encouraged to uh, walk with god from a place of faith not from a place of okay you know do this do that uh, and all and similarly when it comes to us ministers of god or i'm just saying ministers of god for all of us okay all of us are ministering in the name of god firstly we have to be established in that place of faith okay it's not a place of the flesh our works but it's a place of faith where we are convinced. What is faith? Faith is this con deep conviction which we have based on the word of God. Okay, So the word of God and through the word of God, the will of God has been revealed to us. The will of God has been revealed to us. So when the will of God is revealed, we have a strong sense of you know knowing that yes god is going to do it so that is faith we must have faith that god is who he says he is that yes god is a healer yes god is a miracle worker yes god is a provider okay so when i have faith in all this then personally i can receive from god or i can minister to others but if i myself am in a place of doubt i think i'm not sure whether you know god will heal everyone or not or you know whether he'll heal only people who are this senior or people from this community so when i have all these uh, uh you know, things unclear in my mind and i'm not i'm not arrived to a place of faith it becomes very difficult
you're no longer you know uh, uh, dependent on perks or flesh or things like that so to carry on to carry on with faith and similarly for us who serve in the name of god we have to be in that place when we minister to the people it's only then that we will be able to see the supernatural invade the natural uh, so does it mean to say you know there will be absolutely no doubts no there is a possibility for us to have you know some questions or uh, some concerns some uh, doubts some confusion but we have to come to a place of faith and even in the last class i remember we discussed about how you can spend time in the word of god regarding that matter and over time our faith is built up a responsibility i need to come to that place of faith so personally what i do is uh, you know i uh, do study right regarding different uh, matters for example i just said gifts of the spirit so believing god for the gifts of the spirit to manifest through me when i'm ministering uh, so i personally study okay uh, i read we have so many you know, apc publications also like understanding the prophetic gifts of the spirit baptism in the holy spirit so just spending time uh, and reading these uh, publications is very helpful okay meditating on those scriptures but also to build up my own faith what i also do is we have something called as weekend schools at uh, apc so uh, i remember i've attended several weekend schools even when it comes to gifts of the spirit itself i have attended so many weekend schools the reason is when i went for the first weekend school there was one exercise and in that exercise you know pastor had said something like uh, okay pray uh, can you sense god speaking to you can you see something and i had i couldn't okay and i was so upset i was like why is it that i'm not able to uh, you know see this but then i realized that faith comes by hearing the operation of the gifts of the spirits is by faith and how will faith come faith will come by the hearing of the word so the attending you know couple of more we can schools on the same subject again and again and again little by little little by little little by little what happens faith comes and then when faith comes there is the operation of the gifts of the spirit so in that way we must minister from a place of faith okay build up our own personal faith uh i gave the example of gifts of the spirit but it could be um the healing maybe we don't have that kind of faith i i will tell you one more uh, incident uh, in my own life this was uh, i think sometime in 2018 yes 18 where uh, um, uh, like my father was unwell at that time so i was meditating on a lot of uh, scriptures for healing um, and my faith was you know really you know <laughs> being built up and i was also listening to uh, some of the uh, old time uh, ministers of god uh, and their stories of healings so one particular uh, uh, minister of god i was uh, listening to the audio books and it was really powerful really powerful some of uh, the incidents that had taken place in his life and it had built up so much faith in me strangely on that day when i was in the hospital uh, somebody from church called up and to my amazement her son was very unwell okay a young son very unwell uh and he had this fever which had not stopped i think for months and they had put him in a uh like an isolated place you couldn't everyone couldn't go there you needed special permission to enter and they gave it a name a certain kind of fever so she called it she was desperate and she was like can you come and pray and i really wanted to go and pray and i was like where are you but where are you she said this hospital 
this floor and I was shocked because it was in the same hospital as my dad so my dad was recovering and this particular uh, person was on another floor so I told her okay give me the time when will they let the visitors she said okay you can come but you have to wear this you have to wear this I said everything is fine just tell me so I went that day and uh, um, they didn't give much time so I just I was anyway filled with faith because of the word that I was meditating on and all the the you know the uh, testimonies which I had been hearing. So I just went there and the name of Jesus. It was not a long prayer, very short prayer. I just said, I rebuke this fever in Jesus' name. So that child's name, you will recover, your body will recover. And uh, uh, something miraculous happened. So this fever, which had continued for so long, it just stopped. Okay, not at that moment, but eventually, even you know, the next one and a half days or something like that. Slowly, it went away. They got discharged, and that child. This happened 2018, right? I told you 2018. So till now, she continues to be in touch. It hasn't recurred. It has not recurred. So she tells me. It's miraculous. It's miraculous how you were in the same place. You came and you prayed, and you know uh, this stopped. But for me personally, it was a learning. I was like, wow, faith. In those moments, I was just like, where is the fever? Where is the sickness? Let's attack it in Jesus' name. You know, I was in that mode, and the timing was just right. She called and I said, wait, I'm coming now. Okay, so. When faith is built up, I personally have seen in my life things happen, which later when I look back, I'm like, wow, how did that happen? Obviously, it can't be me. But faith in us, it could have been anybody else also. But faith in us, when we go with faith and we minister with faith, supernatural things begin to take place in people's lives. So. Always you know, remain in that place of faith personally. And last week, we also said that it's important to establish people in uh, faith. So it is when they dwell uh, uh, in faith that they can receive. So how will they uh, receive? You know, how, how will their faith be built up? They also need the word. There's only one way. Right? You can get faith. Faith by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So continue to speak the word to them. Continue to share the word you know, to them. So for example, again, just going back to the example of healing. Speaking and teaching people about healing. You know, what happens? After a while, when they encounter sickness, their first response is, wait a minute. God said in his word, I am the God who heals you by the stripes of Jesus. I am uh, healed. So I'm amazed to actually look at some of uh, the people who uh, you know I, I have been journeying with that some point in their lives they were not that believing. But now through the teaching of the word, they come to a place where the they, their response is okay, let's pray. You know, this is happening. Okay, let's pray. Even little children. Uh, uh, there is this one child. Uh, her age would have been, I think, four years or something. Uh, and she had fractured her leg. And I visited the home. The first thing she tells me, you can imagine, you know, four-year-old old child. What would uh, they do if they, they are, uh, uh, you know, facing some difficulty? She told me, Pastor, please pray. Put your hands and pray. Just think about this. Faith, you know, has come. And you know, th this age, we don't have classes. Uh, we don't have like a children's church curriculum and all. But just be around the parents during the services and hearing who Jesus is, what he can do. There is faith in their hearts. One child, I, I remember, he said, uh, he went back home. We, at that point, we were talking about God's guidance. 
and uh, in the sermon uh, there was a part where we talked about uh, angels of god so uh, uh, the mother told me during the week that uh, she was talking to her son and said okay you're going you have to be careful um, uh, I, I want you to be safe and so the son again he was not uh, uh, part of children's church he was just roaming around some some of these small kids right parents will be carrying them so he told his mom mama don't worry angels are there they will guard me because he heard it in the sermon okay so he's got the faith that god is a god who will protect me if it's going to take angels to guard he'll do it so depending on the word of god building people up in, in faith in god's word regarding various matters whether it is faith for their finances the faith for their healing faith for um, uh, the restoration of their marriage uh, faith for uh, um, uh, you know fulfilling uh, the purpose of god for their life faith for a uh, direction in their life whatever it is when we speak the word into them, impart the word into them, faith will arise. And you will begin to see that, oh, everyone's going places because faith has now come and they're able to receive from the supernatural realm into their own life. So we need to teach people, build them up in the world, teach people how to receive by faith. We okay? also know that patience is a uh, an important element as far as you see from God is concerned. It's not like you know, everything we declare happens tomorrow. But I just want to check if uh, uh, you can see here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think the other side will be here. Okay, so um, as long as you can hear me, I'll continue. Zeli, can I continue? Or is it unclear? It's clear. Yeah, okay. Then it's okay, but it's okay. Okay. Then let me see what best we can do here. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll continue. So we've understood that uh, you know faith needs to be built up, people to be equipped to receive by faith, teach people how to walk by faith. Uh, so you see, uh, when it comes to faith, again, one more uh, recently, all these things have happened recently only. So I'm just sharing it as a practical input for us. Uh, at least uh, three, three or four people, they have loved ones and they themselves have been unwell. So uh, there are many Sundays that I've laid hands and prayed for these people. But, you know, they were sharing how uh, they're not, uh, you know, the, the fever went away, the issue went away, uh, but it has a record. So they were like, Pastor, pray. So how many times can I pray? You know, it's not that I don't want to pray, but what would be the best way? I will pray for them, but I need to build them up in God's word. Now, I gave them a couple of resources uh, from our website also. I told them, okay, why don't you meditate on the sermon series? It's about healing and deliverance, uh, this and that. Reason is, it will build up their faith. Then they themselves can receive from God. Okay, so that is one thing. But I wasn't sure how far. You know, some of them are fairly new in the faith also. So I don't know how far they will go and you know pull out a chapter and read it and all. So to simplify it, what I did is I pulled out a bunch of scriptures uh, and uh, I wrote out a prayer 
how to pray. Okay, dear Heavenly Father, this, this, this. Then uh, space for scripture. Insert scripture. Okay, you personalize it and say thank you that uh, uh, you know, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you know you've given me wholeness and health. So I wrote out the whole prayer and gave a section there where they can input the verse uh, and speak it over either themselves or their children or their parents or some three or four people who are going through so for all of them i just wrote it down these are the bunch of scriptures this is the kind of prayer because they probably don't even know how to declare and pray so i sent it to them i said you do one thing you take a different scripture every day and you put it there you speak it out you pray like that so now they've started doing it, all right? So what is the intention? One is that uh, through the scriptures, their faith will be built up. I've told them also, try to meditate on, maybe just one verse, every day just meditate on that one verse and think about it, what Jesus has done for us. Um, and then release that faith, speak it, declare it, because God's word says he's a healer. You know, I receive his healing in the name of Jesus. You release your faith by your confession, by your declaration. So what's happening? We want to train, equip. So every time somebody is sick, they can walk in faith for themselves. Because one is they carry the word in their heart. And they know how to use the faith by praying it through, by declaring it, okay, by meditating the word of god so in in these ways personally to build up faith to build up the faith of people around okay all this becomes very very crucial if we want to see the manifestation of the supernatural so um first we've said in the last class that um god responds to faith most of the miracles you see Jesus doing, uh, it's only like when somebody comes and says, uh, okay, heal my daughter, say a word, Lord, or have mercy on me, son of David. So they had faith that they reached out and they got their miracle. But there are also times when, and these are exceptions, normally through faith people receive, but there are exceptions when people receive without reaching out to God or Jesus with faith, like that man at the pool of Bethsaida or you know, Lazarus who was dead. Like what faith does he have? Right? So God can still work sometimes, even when there is no faith. Uh, and even when, let's say, uh, faith has not been built up through the normal way which I told us, give them the word, teach them the word, build up. Even without that, God can actually work. I'm sure, you know, we've had experiences. I remember there were times when I never really uh, believed in healing that much. But uh, a friend of mine told me about uh, something that she was healed of some skin condition. And that gave me some faith to ask God for healing with regard to i had some breathing issues back then the different level. but i actually saw that resolve so uh, i should tell my classmates back in college that hey my breathing god healed me because really there was a huge difference in the way i used to be and how it had become back then so Maybe there are times when you really don't build people up, but still, somehow, you know, uh, they receive a testimony and that brings in a little bit of faith in their hearts. Or uh, sometimes in the presence of God, I heard this one testimony uh, that a minister of God was sharing that during worship, okay. Apparently, there was a man who had uh, severe neck pain um, uh, due to some, I, I don't uh, remember exact details, due to an accident or something like that. So he had severe pain, okay, neck pain. And during worship, 
uh, something happened. He felt something hot, and uh, it just, you know, resolved on its own. So after the service, he came and asked the preacher. He said, uh, "Do you serve coffee in your services?" So he said, "No, we don't serve coffee." He said, "Why are you telling me? Somebody poured hot coffee on my neck. Uh, suddenly, in the middle of the service, I felt somebody drop their coffee. I felt hot at first, and then, uh, you know, my neck pain was gone." So then the preacher said, "Oh." i didn't even share god's word but what's happening even in the presence of the glory without really taking the normal route you know what what i'm telling you teach the word equip yourself equip the people then the miracle but sometimes in the presence of the glory things will start happening like you'll be like wait a minute i didn't even call it out i didn't even suggest but god's presence You know there is power. There, there was power to be healed. You know, scriptures tell us uh, in Luke when Jesus was there ministering to the people, power was present. So sometimes, regardless of the faith with which people come, healings can take place, miracles can take place, right? Even in the presence of God, and that's why in the last class I was telling us uh, the. we we must encourage people don't wait for me to call out the healing don't wait just as you worship the lord even just walking on the road or any way expect all the time god can work any time uh, an encounter with the lord a supernatural encounter with the lord that also uh can release uh, uh, some miracle that we've been waiting for so it can happen any which way we can't box god up uh, we can surely teach you to say that uh, in the word of god when we when we study about people to see from god maybe those things are what build up faith to receive the presence or the glory of god maybe maybe some level of faith comes from there or uh, without any faith and of the means the people did not even know accepting and suddenly something happened they were like oh i never prayed for it i never asked for it i never believed god for it but i got it. so you see just through the presence of god i am talking in front of the lord So that takes place. So we can equip people. These things happen. These things happen uh, through the anointing. These things happen through the work of the Holy Spirit. So just you. So that kind of uh, encouragement for the people also is very important. And same thing for us also to expect. Or uh, you can do stuff any time, and that expectation. We can have for the Lord, listen to His presence, and, and amazing things happen. So, I just felt I had to break it down more than just telling you all you know, the key points. That's why today it was more of a um, sharing practical incidents that I experienced. So, any thoughts, comments? So, we've touched two keys so far. We've touched. Uh, understanding the spirit, spirit realm, this faith. I hope we have some uh, understanding or a grip of these matters. Any any questions? Okay. I think the beautiful thing about faith is you know, it can work for anyone, right? Uh, and uh, so, yeah, we just have to equip people. So. God's word is faith rises.
So I think faith is a last subject. We have touched on it in our first year course, but obviously, you know, the animation of faith, it's uh, never ending. So do you dwell on this subject and build yourself up, build others up? I've always encouraged by uh, testimonies of congregations where everybody is accepted from God. So if you're a pastor, you're a minister, that's a very good place to be, where we build people up to such an extent that it's no longer just about the pastor. Right? The whole church is expecting God to show up. And such an environment of faith is an environment where, you know, so uh, I mean, that is kind of church that is building today, uh, in the gates of the Lord. So we got to see more of the supernatural. And faith most definitely is one of those keys which will unlock the uh, working of God. So let's pray now and close off today. I want to request uh, someone from the class to uh, pray and, and pass course. Yes, only God, we come to you the name of Jesus again. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class of God. God, how awesome it is to have faith in you, like your friends and your children, and your friends and your learning about faith. God, help us to develop this in us each and every day. Help us to go deeper into your word and help us to equip ourselves with the word. And when we preach this word to others, help us to equip others in this faith to God. Thank you so much for giving us such an authority because of what you did on the cross, Jesus. And God, we really stand in awe and wonder of the works that you are doing. You are beyond imagination. We just couldn't understand that you are amazing. Your love towards us is amazing. Like even on those times when we accept nothing, you always want to care for us, always want to do something for us. You always want to uh, want us to live a happy life in you. What an amazing God you are. Thank you, Jesus. Let this gospel that we are understanding not stay with us. Help us to be bold enough and go out and preach this gospel so that we can make heaven crowded, so that people can see you and they can live an amazing life down here on this earth and they can also live an amazing life in heaven we thank you jesus we stand we really stand in awe you're amazing we love you we praise you and we give you all the glory i bless pastor nancy and each and everyone who has joined in this class help us to develop faith and let this faith work through us and do amazing things down here in jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jafita, and thank you, everyone. Uh, God bless you. Have a great week. We will connect again next Wednesday. Okay, so bye for now.